Most people would tell you that walking out late at night is dangerous. You could get mugged. Or you could run into an ancient ghost of Japan. Because of his encounter, Hiroto Kuragane has caught the attention of Sayuri Tojo, the master of the Sakura One Sword style, and is thrust into the world of Kendo. The only problem? He's a whip. With Sayuri and his new teammates at his side, he now challenges not just himself, but the world of Kendo. Now he must face strong opponents and even stronger schools. With his keen eyes as his only talent, will he be able to bring the Dead Sword style back on top of the Kendo world? Seeing is believing. Osh YouTubers, and it's been too long. So long I might as well have started a new channel with a whole new gimmick, whole new reviews, whole new everything, but I want to come back and give you everything that you've come to love and hate about me. So let's get this started. Kurogane was written and drawn by Ikezawa Haruto. It was published in Shonen Jump and by Suesha. I use past tense because it's no longer with us, sadly. It's your run-of-the-mill sports weak to strong story. In sports, really, there's only two types of stories. They either start off really talented, meeting extra talented people, or they start off really weak, meeting extra talented people. Basically, the moral of the story is, practice. It doesn't matter whether you're super talented or you're a weak, sniveling coward, practice, practice, practice. That's generally what sports stories are here to tell you. And this one's no different. It's pretty run-of-the-mill, actually. But at the same time, I find it very fun and very energetic. You can get really cheesy lines such as, You have the courage to be strong! Or other times it can be really subdued. It's just a want to win. And that's what I really like about this story and its overall plot. While it may be generic, the characters are fun enough and the story is interesting enough to keep going. And it's been a while since I've read a story based on Kendo that I actually like and didn't have an ending that disappointed me. Uh, I, uh. One thing I really have to commend this manga on is not just showing off the sports side of Kendo, but also the martial arts side of Kendo. Kendo's very regulated to keep things safe and to keep things fair. It's very strict and formulaic. And by that I mean, in college you can use two sword style, but in high school it's banned. But in this story, they use two sword style in a high school competition. And I really like that because it's showing off the martial arts of Kendo. Yes, they're breaking the rules, but they're showing off everything Kendo can be and getting people excited for it, and I really like that. These people aren't afraid to fight out on the streets when they want to. They will, and I really enjoy that part. There's this one school that doesn't even participate in tournaments, and they only do so because of a very personal reason. They very much see Kendo from the martial arts aspect than the sports aspect that you can see in this manga itself. They give you very great examples of sportsmen, martial artists, and just practice, basic Kendo practitioners, and I really like that. Well, let's talk more about characters. Our title character, Kurogane Hiroto, is your general weak, wimpy, shounen character who wants to get stronger and better himself. And, you know, that's fine. It's all about how you work with it, right? But even then, a lot of people would say he and not just, you know, not just him, everyone overall is pretty one note. What they're probably looking for is two-dimensional, and what even more so they're looking for is probably cliched, but that's beside the point. The point I'm getting to is that they're deeper than what they seem to be. Let's take Kurogane's like, main ideal and goal. His overall ideal throughout the whole story is, I want to be a hero. Now what you're thinking is that that sounds very childish and very boring and cliché. And you're right, it does. But what it comes from is him idolizing his childhood friend. Who, you know, had all the kids around him, was super cool and super amazing. Overall, generally better than him. You know, more athletic, more inept. And, you know, he wants to better himself. So, he wants to be just like his friend, so hero to him is just an ideal, and you know, it's not like, oh, I want to be a hero, I want to save people, it's more like, I want to better myself, I want to be better than what I am right now, and in all honesty, what they picture him as is someone who really isn't all that inept, I mean, other than sports, he seems like a pretty natural, okay guy who could easily probably make some friends if he tried, he could also probably get into sports if he tried to, but no, 
plot and humor. That 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 can't happen. Sayuri is the next character that I really want to talk about. Cause you know, we've seen this whole ghost aspect done before, and I won't really say it's better or not, but what makes it different is her character. At one point she can see him as a katana wielding scary ghost lady. At another point she's this cute little mascot character that's very quirky. And you know, I like the contrast, and the contrast is actually a main part of her character. In fact, it's part of the reason why she died and became a ghost. And I'm sad that they couldn't really get into that during the main serialization. In fact, I think if they did get into it, it would have helped keep it serialized. It would have kept some mystery in there instead of just being stuffed at the end of the final volume. It really brings her character together, and I'm just sad I can see more of it. The art is really, really nice. It's pretty much the high point of the series, which is kind of sad when you think about it, but that's a discussion for another section of this review. The lines are very solid, and the action for the most part is easy to follow. The silhouettes on the mask are fantastic. There's something about the silhouettes that I just love, and this has so much. That being said, the tones can be a bit on the dark side, but that also complements the darkness of Kendo because they are wearing masks, and the clothes can either be either just really white or just really dark in themselves. And it, the facial expressions are one of the greatest that I've ever seen. I mean, I, that one's just so cute, and I just I just want to punch the other one in the face. You know, I don't really look at a lot of different things for a review. I look at what other people think, I look at other reviews, I just get an overall feel on how people, you know, feel about it. And, you know, what I learned is people don't know when something has been cancelled or not, and you see comments like, man, this ending sucks, or, man, they don't even show the rest of the tournament, and my thoughts are really, you can't tell it was cancelled, it's quite obvious, or maybe, maybe I just know too well the hurt of having things that you love no longer continue. Maybe... Man, I'm depressed. So instead of looking at its weaknesses, let's see why it didn't succeed. It's pretty much the same thing, but it has a less kick it while it's down feeling. Now, one of the things that I think held this story back is pretty much the characters. As much as I like them, if you don't really invest in them, they seem pretty cookie cutter. They follow a lot of tropes, and they can seem plain. I think they're super awesome and amazing, but hey, those are just my two cents. Now, another thing to talk about is the pacing. After reading it and looking back, it's pretty fast. They go to a good amount of tournaments. They meet a good amount of rivals. They, they meet a lot of rivals, actually. But the point is that after every tournament, and you know, pretty much you can count them as arts, the pace doesn't keep up. Basically, you have to start the tournament. That's pretty much the lowest part. And then, you know, you go through and you're high, and then you, you get back low again, but at the same point, you feel like you've progressed further than where you were from the start. This doesn't really have that, and it, I don't think it maintained the pace quite as bit as it wanted to. And another thing is that I think that dealing with Sayuri and her past all together, like I said earlier, that could have really helped keep interest, especially when Tojo shows up who is pretty much the inheritor, the true inheritor of those skills and of that kendo. And that would have been a perfect time to just get a little glimpse in the past. But at the same time, when Tojo shows up, the story could have been canceled. And it was very close, if not already. While I did say the pacing and the characters were the weak point of the story, they're also the strong point of the story. What I'm basically saying is that the story is a lot more about steadily building yourself up and moving forward. And you know, it carries that in the pacing. And that's what I really enjoyed. They didn't really define characters as what they were, so much as what they are now and what they're going to be. It's not that characters didn't have their defining traits already. A lot of characters did, and a lot of characters had backstories that didn't get explained, or did get explained, but what was more important is where they were going, and what they were doing, and I really enjoyed that, and it's a slow character development that builds over time, instead of, you know, having character development that happens in the past through flashbacks and stuff, it's very, like I said, moving forward instead of how they became the way they are now. And that's what I personally like. 
and I did find the characters interesting enough. You know, they all interacted with each other differently. They're all friends in their own different way. And, you know, the thing about Kendo is that it's not just a team sport. It's also a very individual sport. So I really wanted to see them fight all each other, one-on-one, -on -one, in a team, all of that. And just didn't get that far. And I don't know how many times I said it, but I'm really fucking sad that this story didn't continue and it got cancelled. Overall, I think I said this before about another manga, but if it was in another magazine, I think this story could have lasted at least a little bit longer. No, I'm pretty sure it could have lasted a little bit longer, but that's besides the point. Overall, I don't find this story bad. Kurogane is very methodical. It follows a lot of cues. It's very cliched, but at the same time, it brings you characters, which is very much the center focus of any shonen manga. It brings you characters that are very unique and very different and very interesting. And I wanted to see them grow and become more and become better and you know, in, in Shonen Jump you really can't do that. You really gotta hit them hard, hit them fast, and if you don't got them now, you, you'll never get them at all. And that's sad and bothersome. Um, I'm not giving it a score. I'm not doing scores anymore because, well, I'll probably make a video on that. But, hey, at the end of the day, I'm still going to give you a recommendation whether I give you a score or not. And would I recommend Kurogane? Yes, if you want something quick to read and you want something just fly right through, it's very easy to read. It's very quick. And I find it very interesting. And, you know, if you realize it's cancelled, which I've pretty much told you time and time again, it's canceled. It's canceled. It, you know, the ending will satisfy you enough, but, you know, just go in knowing that. But I kind of don't want to recommend it because you might be like me, wanting so much more, and you know you're just not going to get it. But hey, that's another manga. Um, until next time, hopefully not a year later, I'll tell, oh, and I'll review something else. Maybe I'll pander. Maybe I'll be pick something very deep. It'll be one of those two. And then it'll be the other.